So ChatGPT4 Explained for Dummies, pretty much it's just bigger and better, more features, more capabilities. That's it. End the video. Thank you for watching. I'm just kidding. What I want to do is explain it in a not so techno babble way. I know there's a lot of talk with technology where you read it and you're like, what does that even mean? So allow me to explain it very simply. I will be going over their announcement uh, that they had not too long ago. And then I'll actually be showing you an example about how it's, it is much bigger and better. So it's most advanced system producing safer and more useful responses. That is a perfect way of saying it. So this is actually a great little example right here. It can solve difficult problems with greater accuracy thanks to its broader general knowledge and problem solving abilities. So if you look at this, this is fantastic right here. Explain the plot of Cinderella in a sentence where each word has to begin with the next letter in the alphabet from A to Z without repeating any letters. So as you'll see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I'll read some of it, but it says, a beautiful Cinderella dwelling eagerly finally gains happiness, inspiring jealous kin, love magically nurtures, opulent prince <laughs> quietly rescues, slipper triumphs, uniting very wondrously, zenial youth zealously. Okay, so I read it all, but that's great. Okay, so visual input, there are going to be aspects with images. What can I make with these ingredients? And of course, there are many options you could do, and it's going to just talk about that. How cool is that? So it's able to actually take a picture, look at it, and kind of just not only describe it, but take information from it to give you what you want. And of course, longer context is going to be great. It says it's capable of handling over 25,000 words of text, allowing for use cases like long form content creation, extended conversations, and document search and analysis. That is a huge difference. I think the previous one was like around 3,000. This is another, I'm going to do one more example, then I'll show you. So it talks about where it gives you examples about this person is free from here to this time, and then this time to that time. And it talks about, uh, let's see, what are there some options for start times for a 30 minute meeting? You know, it says for Andrew is this, for Joanne is this, for Hannah this, and the common availability will be from 12 to 1230. So it can solve these complex problems, which talks about uh, that it's scoring higher with specific test taking and so on and so forth. So what I did is do a great example here when it comes to productivity. And I'm going to show you that it's going to be a little bit more complex. I have uh, chat GPT four here, as you can see, it excels at tasks that require advanced reasoning, complex instruction, understanding, and more creativity. And as we read this, you're going to see there is a bit, little bit more complexity. So I actually talked about my schedule here. I need to wake up at 4.44 AM to go to the gym. I get back around, oops. If I finish work at 4.30 p.m., how many small breaks can I take throughout the work period so that I have plenty of energy throughout the day? So you'll notice there's a little bit more in terms of complexity here, talking about when I wake up, when I get back, when my work time is going to start, when it's going to end. So not only is it talking about when should I, you know, take gaps so that I, you know, don't burn out or something like that. It's going to also use that information to give us an answer. So there's much more finite details to this. Let's click on the arrow button. And of course, the thing with chat GPT-4, it's going to be a little bit slower when it comes to generating the content. It's, you know, it's kind of one of those push and pull things where you get a lot of these other higher quality features, but it's going to be a little bit slower and that's fine. With that being said, what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and start reading this to you because I'll probably catch up to it. So there isn't a specific number of breaks that guarantees you'll have plenty of energy throughout the day, as this can depend on various factors such as your energy levels, sleep quality, and individual preferences. However, I can provide some general guidelines to help you plan your breaks for a better workday experience. First, let's determine the length of your work period. If you start working at 6.30 a.m. and finish at 4.30, you will have a 10-hour workday. Keep in mind, um, I don't always do that. It's, it's kind of rare that I do 10 hours. I like doing a little bit less because I find, me personally, if I do more hours, you burn out quicker, and then you're just like less energy the next day where it just messes up anyway. Anyway, so just throwing that out there. One popular method for structuring breaks is the Pomodoro technique. Love that. I used to use that a lot. I haven't lately, but thank you for the reminder, which involves working for 25 minutes and then taking a five minute break. After four 25 minute work sessions or Pomodoros, you take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes. This method is intended to improve, improve focus and productivity while reducing mental fatigue. If you decide to follow the technique, here's how your day could look like. So this is a great example of exactly what I'm talking about. There are a lot of specific when it comes to this, like the time I wake up, the time I get back, and when I'm going to be working. And it uses those parameters to create a nice schedule for me. So from 6.30 to 6.55 is the first one, five-minute break. Once again, work, five-minute break. 
third Pomodoro, five minute break, you know, work, fourth, five minute break, and then repeat this cycle until the end of the workday at 4.30. It's even good enough to say like, you know the, uh, the idea by now, you can figure it out, just keep repeating this cycle. And it said this method would give you a total of 12 Pomodoros and 11 breaks, eight five minute breaks and three 30 minute breaks. Okay, I don't know what the time is off the top of my head. It could be a little bit more, or a little bit less. Obviously you would repeat the cycle until you feel like stopping or you can keep going. Of course, this is just one example of how structure breaks uh, how to structure breaks during your workday. You can experiment with different work and break durations to find what suits you best. The key is to ensure that you're taking regular breaks to maintain focus and energy levels throughout the day. So I hope this is example was a great idea of explaining what chat GPT-4 can do. Aside from the speed being a little bit slower, it's great at taking specific parameters or just specifics in general, working with them to solve more problems and give you a much better answer. Plus, I love in the beginning where it talks about, well, there's pretty much going to be a lot of specifics in terms of why you might or might not have energy, thanks to sleep or individual preferences or anything else. And then it actually gives you a great answer. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I tried to explain that as simply as possible because I certainly know when it comes to chat GPT or just chat GPT-4, there's a lot of techno babble where you read a phrase and you're like, okay, that's great, but what does it mean? And I hope this simplified it for you. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.